And everybody has a different talent. And the reason we're all so messed up is because you're looking at everybody else's yeah. talent yeah. and wishing you had some of their talent. All the energy that you spend thinking about, wishing about, being jealous of, envious of anybody else is energy that you're not only putting out that's going to come back to you negatively, but you're taking that away from you. All your energy should be forced on what do I have to offer? What do I have to give? How can I be used in service? Because Dr. King's message of not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. And there is not a job in here that you can do that you don't switch the paradigm to service and not make that job more fulfilling. I don't care what the job is. If you say, if I look at this from, how do I use this in service to something bigger than myself? It no longer becomes a job. It becomes an offering to the world. There is not one thing that has ever happened to you. Not one experience, not one encounter, not one crisis, not one joyful thing that hasn't happened just to make you better and help you rise. Every single thing you're calling in, whether you know it or not, when you figure out that you are calling it in, when you actually start meditating or praying or doing or having a spiritual practice, which is the number one thing you need if you want to be successful in the world. You need something that gives back and nourishes you regardless of what you call that. You need, to, you need to fill your cup so that you can be so full your cup runneth over and you have enough to give to other people. If you don't fill your cup, you end up dried up. You end up tired, exhausted, and don't have enough to give to other people. You end up resentful every time somebody asks you because your cup is empty and now they want some of yours. <laughs> so your number one job, your number one job is to fill your cup and make yourself whole. That's your job. And I am now at this stage of my career thinking about how to do that more poignantly and fruitfully. I'm now looking for ways that I can do that to uh, create a level of sustainability in, within our communities that will go long beyond you know, my lifetime. Time. Everything you even try to do to me is already done to you. That is not just a, a rhetorical saying, that is law. That is Newton's third law of motion in physics, which says everything that goes out is coming back. Mm. It's just like everything that goes up is coming down, may take it a long time to come down, is coming down. <laughs> everything that goes out is coming back, it's coming back. So. To answer the power of manifestation and meditation, what meditation does is sync you up with the source. What meditation does is allows you to literally tap into the power that created you so that you are in alignment with that. And so when you carry that out into the world, everything that you do comes from the center of that alignment that's coming from the source that we call God, we call divine energy, divine intelligence, whatever name you want to give it to, we call life. When you are synced up with life, life just gives to you. Wherever you are in your life, in your relationships, every person that you encounter, every experience, the person wants to know, was that okay? Was that okay? And what I started to hear was that what people are really saying is, did you hear me? Did you hear me? And did what I say mean anything right. to you? And so I started to listen with that in mind, with that intention of validating that your being here, your speaking to me, your taking the time to do this with me is important because you matter. And that's true for everybody who's watching or listening, that every argument that you ever have, every encounter, the person just wants to know, did you hear me? Did you see me? And did I say anything that happy you? you will find true success and happiness if you have only one goal. There really is only one, and that is this, to fulfill the highest, most truthful, expression of yourself as a human being. You want to max out your humanity. 
by using your energy to lift yourself up, your family, and the people around you. Theologian Howard Thurman said it best. He said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Do you believe that you are worthy of happiness? Do you believe that happiness, success, abundance, comfort, fulfillment, peace, joy, love is a part of your birthright? Is that what you believe? Or do you believe something else? Because you will manifest the life that you believe. I've always known that no matter what my belief is, I'm going to be all right. Empowerment is authority. It is a sign permission slip to actually seize the day. It's the process of getting stronger and more confident and more engaged. And to be empowered is to move through the world without any kind of fear or any kind of apology. And with these gifts comes an even deeper privilege, I believe, and that is the ability to take charge of your own life, to own yourself and claim your rights. And here's what I know for sure, that to whom much is given, much is expected. And I have been given so much. I've earned it, I've been blessed with it, but I've been given a lot. And that's why I've chosen to use my life to lift other people up. Nobody's journey is seamless or smooth. We all stumble, we all have setbacks. If things go wrong, you hit a dead end, as you will. It's just life's way of saying, time to change course. So ask every failure, this is what I do. Every failure, every crisis, every difficult time, I say, what is this here to teach me? And as soon as you get the lesson, you get to move on. If you really get the lesson, you pass and you don't have to repeat the class. If you don't get the lesson, it shows up wearing another pair of pants or skirt to give you some remedial work. And what I found is that difficulties come when you don't pay attention to life's whisper because life always whispers to you first, first and if you ignore the whisper sooner or later you'll get a scream. Whatever you resist persists but if you ask the right question not why is this happening but what is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? It puts you in the place and space to get the lesson you need. I have always known this about celebrity. The real power of being somebody that somebody knows and I really think that the only difference between being famous and not is that more people know your name. So the only difference between understanding that is understanding that what Selma has done, what Susan has done, what Anna has done, Rebecca has done, what Jim has done, what I've done, you too can do. Because true philanthropy comes from living from the heart of yourself and giving what you have been given. How will you do that? How will you use your personality, the energy of your personality to serve that which is your soul's calling? I know this for sure. Any life, no matter how fantastic it is, how glorious it seems, how much attention you receive, how much square footage you have. Any life and every life is enhanced by the sharing and the giving and the opening up of the heart space. Your life gets better when you can find a way to share it with someone else. So what we've done, you can do. The real empowerment comes when every person leaves this room and makes a decision, makes a decision. Maybe that decision is that you will write a check and support some of the wonderful organizations you've heard here today. But the true decision is, how will you use yourself? How will you use everything that you have been given to serve that which is greater than yourself? How will you use that to become truly, authentically empowered? Now, it is a beautiful thing to receive an award and to be on the cover of Variety. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful thing. 
But the true reward is in the lives that you are able to touch and the people who you know you have impacted. I live and move and have my being. And you want to know why I am really so successful? I knew that at four years old. I knew that when my grandmother said, you better watch me now, because one day you're going to have to learn how to wash these clothes and hang them up like this. So I'd watch how I hold these clothes pins in my mouth. I went, mm. <laughs> And the reason I could do that is because spirit, otherwise known as intuition, my instinct said, mm -mm. That's not going to be my life. So we all have that spiritual side. And this lesson tonight is about connecting to it. I believe that beneath the surface of all physical problems is a spiritual solution. There is a spiritual solution. Why? Because you are a spiritual being having a human experience. That's the beginning of understanding spirituality. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. And I would say reading is the strongest signal for success in the future that I've ever seen. It is the strongest, strongest, strongest. I got my first job in radio uh, when I was 16 years old, because I've been, been broadcasting since I was 16 years old. But my first job I got because I was a great reader. When you are a great reader, you can articulate and speak and command the English language in ways that other people cannot. And people think you're a lot smarter than you are, <laughs> lots of times, because you're a great reader. If somebody ever says to you, if you're ever rejected in that way, you never, ever, ever forget it. I said, but it's okay. I did okay, you did okay. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. But the answer to your question is, if you can find what is your passion, if you find what you love, you never get tired or if you do get tired, it, you, you're fueled by the energy of your work. So I believe that, um, that what has happened to me is really the beginning of the greater passion to come. But if you find out what you're supposed to do, and you know what you're supposed to do by how, how it feels. You know, people wait on the voice of God to be some, the Moses in the burning bush. I think that was only Bible talk, you know, because he doesn't come to burning bushes for people. He comes through your heart. He speaks through your heart, through your feelings. And so you know what if you're doing the right thing, if it feels like it's right to you. And when you hit the thing that feels right, when you know it's the right thing, you, would, you know it's right because it gives you your juice. And you know it's right because you would do it for nothing. You would do it for nothing and find a way to be able just to do it in order to be able to continue. That's how you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. From time to time, you may stumble, fall. You will for sure count on this. No doubt, you will have questions and you will have doubts about your path. But I know this, if you're willing to listen, to be guided by that still small voice that is the GPS within yourself, to find out what makes you come alive you will be more than okay. You will be happy. You will be successful. And you will make a difference in the world. Many times you will have angst and worry about things and put yourself in a state, like someone said this morning because their phone went off, they were mortified over a phone, I said, really? Um, you will put yourself in a state when the other person really isn't even thinking about you. So. Learning that I could specifically determine for myself what the boundaries were for me. What I wanted to do, give my money, give my time, give of my service to who I wanted to give it to when I did, that I get to make that decision. And just because you get a hundred requests a week doesn't mean you have to try to fulfill all of that. Just because you have all of these demands on your time and on you doesn't mean that you have to say yes. You get to decide because you're the master of your fate, the captain of your soul, as William Ernest Henley said in Invictus. And understanding that really changed the meaning of my life in that I was not no longer driven by what other people wanted me to do. 
but took charge of my own destiny, making choices based upon what do I feel is the next right move for me. Create a baseline for ourselves that's based on intention. This was around 1989 when I'd read Gary Zukav's book called The Seat of the Soul. And that book was life-changing for me because in it he talked about the power of intention and that cause and effect, what goes out comes back, is determined by your intention. The energy of your intention is what determines your life. Most people don't think about their intention. They just think about what they want to do. Most people don't think about why they want to do it. But what's going to come back to you, the energy that's going to come back to you, is the real why of why you did it.
what's left is right Chasing stars and holding you I can't see the end, but we'll see it through Got it. 